Hello everyone, it's Meg and welcome to another reading vlog. This reading vlog is very exciting if you cannot tell by the title already but before I talk about the book I'm going to be reading in this vlog I just need to talk about the book that I literally finished about 20 minutes ago before I burst because it is absolutely magnificent. It is definitely my one of my favourite books of the year so far that I've read and I just need to talk about it really quickly so excuse you can skip this bit if you don't want to hear about it but it is historical fiction which kind of links to the book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog today um, but that book is The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst and I heard about this book a couple of years ago from Shannon and as soon as I heard about it and you needed to read it and let me tell you this book did not disappoint this is described as a 17th century like feminist story and honestly it is just absolutely magnificent uh, it's basically about the life of our main character Ursula Flight from when she's born up to when she's 19 years old at the end of the book and it is mainly about what it is like to be a woman in the 17th century in England and it is just incredible there's so many feminist themes in here and just what it is like to be a woman, a woman and how much men control women and how women are perceived by men and but also how women want to fight back especially Ursula she doesn't want that standard life of getting married raising a family she wants to be a playwright she loves plays and it's just honestly incredible and I don't tear up at books I don't cry at books I'm not one of those people but one of the little passages I can't read it to you because it's probably a bit spoil it'll be spoilery but the last passage one of the last passages I read in here made me tear up a little bit and by a little bit I mean like my eyes were slightly damp but still um it, it just meant so much and it was just such a beautiful moment and a beautiful moment for our character and just resonate will resonate with women everywhere um so it was just honestly incredible uh i adored it thank you women and if you're looking for a new historical fiction please go and pick this book up i absolutely adored it i did think about vlogging my experience reading this actually and i didn't and i really wish i had which seems to be the theme of a lot of books that i read um but yeah i just have to just quickly talk about this because i absolutely adored it if Anna Marie comes up with anything else in the future I will be reading it especially if it's historical fiction just oh man this book is just excellent I will talk about it more in a recent reads video which may or may not be going a part of this depending on kind of when I'm filming it but yeah just had to talk about it like I said because this is excellent and I just need to talk about it to somebody so now I have had my little rant and my little burst about that wonderful book let's talk about the book that I'm actually going to be reading and the theme of this vlog so this vlog if you cannot tell by the title of this video is kind of like it's not a battle exactly but it's kind of like a versus video so if you watched most of my vlogs or most of my videos last year you will know that my favourite book of last year was The Other Bennet Sister by Janice Hadlow which is a retelling of Mary Bennet from Prime and Prejudice absolutely adored it if you cannot tell by all the gazillions of tabs that I have I just utterly adored this book with my whole heart I still do and there are a lot of Pride Prejudice returnings out there and I came across last year after I read this book another Mary Bennett retelling which is called Mary B by Catherine J Chen and I was intrigued by this book but I was also a bit suspicious or wary should I say because obviously I had read this Mary Bennett retelling I adored it to my heart's content and I don't feel like anything could ever compared to this or be better than it so I bought this um, about maybe last month from when I'm filming this video uh, in the sale so I thought I would read this book and kind of compare it 
to this book and see which is the better Mary Bennett retelling because obviously you guys know I love Pride and Prejudice. I will be doing a Pride and Prejudice retelling book recommendation video at some point. I have got a list that is accumulating. I've read most of the books. This is one of them that I will be including in that video as long as I like it and I have maybe about two or three other books or may maybe four. I don't know, I have maybe about five max, maybe about four books that I still need to read for that video but I'm just, I'm so excited. I need to just knuckle down and read these books for that video because I want to get it done, I want to get it out there. It's a video I'm really excited to film and it's obviously been very long in the making because I've had to read so many books for it. So I'm going to be reading this Mary Bennett re Prime and Prejudice retelling which I'm so intrigued by especially because this book is just over 300 pages. It is 317 pages to be exact and the other Bennett sister is 655 pages and this book takes place before, during and after Pride and Prejudice and so does this book and if you can see the size difference, there is a very large size difference. This book is definitely like twice the size of this one. So I'm honestly just so intrigued how the author for this book is going to span that timeline of before, during and after the events of Prime Prejudice uh, compared to this book which is obviously a lot longer. So I'm just honestly intrigued and I want to vlog my experience. So that's what we're going to do in this video. It's about quarter past nine now and I am going to start this tonight. I probably won't get that far into it. Um, but like I said, I'll just take you guys step by step through the journey of me reading this book. We will see what we think, see if it's better or worse or just as good as this book, this retelling. We shall see if I could maybe get so many tabs on it just like this one. Honestly, I'm just intrigued, I'm really interested um, and maybe if you guys are interested in picking one or both of these books up in my hip, decide which one you're going to pick up first, we shall see. So that's what we're going to do. Welcome to this vlog, I hope you guys enjoy it and I'm going to probably watch a little bit of booktube and then I'm going to sit down and start reading this book. <music> days later now and I have just been out and done some errands today. I've gone with my fringe trimmed and I went to go and pick a book up from the bookshop, a pre-order of a new book which is very exciting and I went and got a bubble tea for sales at it. I got a matcha creme brulee with tapioca pearls and it is a bit, it looks a bit of a mess because it's been in the car whilst I've been driving but I'm very much enjoying it so far. I'm a sucker for bubble tea and matcha together is incredible so that's what's happening. So I thought I would show you the books. Obviously you guys will see a little bit of footage from me in the bookshop. There were lots of books. I'm really trying not to buy books um, because my physical TBR is like full. It's like nearly two shelves on my TBR cart and I don't want it to get any bigger than that. I did buy two more books though whilst I was in there. One of them is a second copy of a book I already love and the other one is a book that 
has just been speaking to me and not gonna lie the hype has definitely convinced me to get it so the first book that I got because obviously it was like buy one get one half price is Still Life by Sarah Winman this is the stunning paperback edition I read this book last year one of my favorite books last year and I only found out yesterday actually from Instagram that this book has is now paperback and also it's the Waterstones book pick of the month like their monthly pick um which is incredible it's so like happy for Sarah incredible book and I only buy second or different editions of books that I really really love and obviously I love this book so I'm very excited to have a second copy of this and the second book that I got is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint and I got this mainly off the fact that Chloe from Books with Chloe she seems to be reading some incredible books at the moment um, I have seen this book about but hearing her talk about it and the fact like it's about women and all that sort of thing I was just like yes so I decided to get it um, and it's a historical fiction as well it's Greek mythology like a retelling and I am yet to read a Greek mythology retelling I have Circe on my physical TBR it's been there for maybe about two years I need to read that I do want to get to it soon um, but obviously this is like a second one I've heard really good things about it kind of just generally so I'm very excited to get to this and it also has a beautiful stunning like foil cover which I very much appreciate. Now let's get to the book that I pre-ordered which as soon as I heard about this book I was just like yes I need to get this book. But that book is A Lila Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herrin Blake and yes as soon as I heard about this book I knew how to read it, one of my most anticipated releases of the year, it is a sapphic romance and one of our main characters, Delilah, she's a photographer which is also one of the reasons why it like, like kind of sold me, being a photographer myself I love reading about other photographers in fiction, um, this is like a romance and I'm just so excited, like here's this beautiful cover, I'm not usually a fan of one with books with people on the cover but I do enjoy this and here is the synopsis if you would like to pause and read what it's about but I'm just really excited to read this book I don't know exactly when I'll get to it maybe more in like the spring I feel like like romance is kind of in the spring that sort of thing so that is my little book haul I am very pleased with all these books I'm so excited to read them all obviously I've already read this one but I'm excited to read the other two and add them to my collection. Now on to my reading updates. So I am now 70 pages into Mary B by Catherine J Chen and so far I do have some thoughts. So obviously I had to go into the mindset with this book of trying to detach it and not compare it to the other Bennett sister because obviously I really adored that book. So obviously this has to be its own story, it doesn't have to relate to the other story because obviously they're their own stories, it's the author's own interpretation of like what Mary's life is like and like her story outside of Prime Prejudice. But I'm not too sure about this, like I don't feel fully engaged with it yet. I feel more engaged than I was like when I first started this book but there's just something about it that's not quite clicking and I know obviously part of it is the fact that I'm still comparing it, like I said, to the other Bennett sister trying really hard not to but obviously I feel like I'm still trying to fully figure out who Mary is as a character there's just something I don't know there's just something not quite clear enough or like clicking and I don't quite know what that is um I just feel like I'm still very much trying to figure out who she is as a person I know bits about her but it's just not quite as clear and I want to I see the relationships between her and her family you kind of it's quite clear even from the original Prime Prejudice kind of the relationships that she has but yeah I just feel like I'm still trying to know her more as a person obviously I'm not very far into the book I'm not even halfway and not even 100 pages in so I'm still learning that but I should have I feel like I should have a bit more of a distinct knowledge from the start if that makes sense and something that I'm all I didn't like which was quite apparent from the beginning of the story is how mean and horrid Kitty is to Mary like obviously Kitty is the fourth child, she is like a parent that care about her that much, she's very much in Lydia's shadow, like copying Lydia to try and get the attention, so obviously she has like a lot of anger kind of built up because she's like you know a child that nobody really cares about that much, but she seems extra mean in this to Mary, like she ripped up a piece of 
sheet music that Mary took hours to write up by hand, to copy out by hand, like for no apparent reason, just because she was in a bit of a strop. And I felt like that was just a bit mean. I just don't think that was necessary. Like obviously this is just the character as well, but I don't feel like Kitty's that mean in the original Pride and Prejudice. Like obviously, you know, she does copy Lydia to a certain extent, um, but I never thought her to be that sort of person. So I don't know how I feel about that personally. But that's the only like main issue I have. I don't feel like I'm just quite clicking with the writing either. And this book does kind of jump around a bit. Like we're a part now, like during Pride and Prejudice when Mr. Collins is staying with the Bennets and she's been having a conversation with Mr. Collins. And you kind of see it from the original Pride and Prejudice as well that she likes Mr. Collins. I think that's given, I don't think that's a spoiler. And obviously she has very different views on him than she does, than her sisters do. But during that this conversation, it happened before and I didn't actually realise it had jumped. I don't know whether that, that was probably just personally me like messing something out in the book. But there's like flashbacks to like different events that have happened and in this book and I don't often realise that. I feel like it's just jumped about in the timeline of the story a bit. Which isn't a bad thing, it just, it, it doesn't seem very clear. I don't know if what I'm saying is exactly makes sense, but yeah, I'm not like thrilled with it so far. This is like three stars at the moment. Um, hopefully it's gonna get better. I'm intrigued to kind of see where it goes after the events of Prime Prejudice and kind of how long, like into the original story this book goes. Um, but it just has some similarities with like the other Bennett sister, kind of how Mary wants to have a connection with her father since obviously he is somebody who likes to read a lot and like kind of he has a wide expanse of knowledge and Mary wants to kind of connect with him on that level but I don't see that as much so far in this book as I did in the other book and there's also something that happens at the beginning like one of the scenes is sort of similar um at the beginning as well there's like a moment in this book that's similar to the other book as well so it's kind of interesting seeing like the similarities in that but yeah, hopefully those thoughts kind of make sense. I'm just like, this book is okay at the moment. I'm not thrilled with it. The other book, The Bennett Sister, is definitely my favourite so far. But obviously, like I said, I'm not 100 pages into this yet. So hopefully it'll get better. And I'm really intrigued to kind of see what Mary's story will be like after like the events of Pride and Prejudice have taken place when it's definitely Mary's own story. So those are my reading updates at the moment. My little book haul. And I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up today. I have a writing workshop I'm doing tonight, which I'm actually quite nervous about because it's a Zoom one, but it's like face to face at the same time. Uh, I'm quite nervous about it, but hopefully it'll go okay. So I'm gonna go and get some lunch now because it's quite late and I need to go and eat something. And then I will update you guys once I have read some more of this book. So I am now on page 201, which is chapter 23 of Mary B. So I am on the second part of this novel now, There's, it's split into three parts and it's now taking place after Pride and Prejudice. And like, I've just read a bit, I will talk about it in a minute, not quite yet because I need to catch up on everything else. But the chapter that I just read just infuriated me so much. I, it's been a couple of hours since I like read that chapter. I'm still furious about it. So like I said, I am like over halfway through now and I am on the bit where it takes place after Prime Prejudice. And I'm gonna try my best to talk about this and not spoil it too much. This is where I wish it was a spoiler filled vlog, but obviously it, I know not quite a few of you guys might not have read this book, so I want to just keep it as spoiler free as possible. But yes, I have finished the bit where it takes place during Pride and Prejudice, and it ends in sort of a similar place where the Bennett sister did. Um, 
which I guess isn't, isn't much of a spoiler, it's kind of more like around the Neverfield Ball kind of area where the Prime Prejudice like section of this book finishes. And obviously even though this is a Prime Prejudice retelling, I do feel like this is very much its own story, um, like the bit, like, like I said, set during Prime Prejudice, like it's very much obviously Mary's journey, like you don't hear too much about the original story, like you hear the key parts of it and stuff like that, like obviously the balls and all that sort of thing, um, but it is very much its own story, which I do in I do enjoy that aspect. Something that I wasn't expecting, I can't remember whether I mentioned this in my previous clip, is that Mary has quite a good relationship with Darcy and that bleeds into the second section that I'm on now because she, obviously this is after Pine Prejudice, we know what happens and Mary is currently staying with Lizzie and Darcy at Pemberley. Um, that's, like I said, talk about that in a minute. But yeah, she has a, quite a good relationship with Darcy, which I wasn't expecting. I'm not mad about it. Um, it's just something I wasn't expecting. And then there's a theme that goes on in here with a certain main character. And if you have read, obviously, if you've read Prime Prejudice, you kind of know. Mary's attachment to this main character, but obviously he has feelings for somebody else and we all know how it ends. Um, so it was interesting kind of seeing more of their connection in this book and like this author's own interpretation of it. And then like I said, second section, after Pride and Prejudice has taken place, Mary is staying with Lizzie and Darcy at Pemberley, like I said before, and obviously this is where things could be totally different. This is the part where it's kind of frustrating me, this bit, because obviously the author can go any way that, way that they want to. Um, obviously it's their own interpretation of what would happen afterwards. And I like that Lizzie and Mary seem to have a better relationship. I mean, they have quite a good relation, relatively good relationship in the other uh, Bennett sister. But like, even more so, like Mary is really enjoying her stay at Pemberley. She gets along obviously with Lizzie and Darcy and she has a bit more, I don't know if grit is quite the right word, but she has a bit more spark in her Mary. Um, maybe a little bit more sass, maybe that's the right word. But she's also very, very naive um, in this book. And you do get that in the other book, Mary Bennett Retelling as well. Um, but you see her grow a lot more and I haven't really seen her grow in this book much but she has a lot of banter between her and Lizzie and also the way she interacts with other people like there is a new character or like a character that you are fam you will be familiar with from the original story um, has just come back into the story in the second part and he has never met Mary before and there's kind of an exchange that happens at the beginning and they just don't get off to a great start and I don't like how this character is portrayed. I'm not going to spoil it because I don't want to spoil it for you guys but he's, he's a very familiar character, kind of he appears halfway through the original story of Prime Prejudice um, and he's related to Darcy so that's kind of a hint there but he returns and he's nothing absolutely nothing like he is in the original Prime Prejudice story and I, do, I don't like that. I don't mind people putting their own twist on characters and maybe showing a different side of them but this is just totally off scale from what this character is like in the original story. He's very kind, very gentlemanly like, even though he's not like a super main character you get like a really good impression from him. And in this book, he is a womanizer. He's a dick, to be quite honest. Um, and I just don't care for him at all. And like I said, him and Mary kind of get off on the wrong foot when they first meet each other. And he says some really mean things to Mary, like really nasty, horrible, so for just something horrible because he doesn't know who she is. He mistakes her for a servant, and obviously she's not. Um, he just says something really horrible to her, and then he tries to, like, I don't know, go about his own way of making amends, something along those lines. Um, and he's just... I just don't like him. 
he's not like that in the original story. And like I said, I know you can have your own twist on a character, but this is just, this is just not it. Like, absolutely not it. And there's been a scene that's just come on where he's basically insulted Mary again. Um, and he kind of shows off that he's kind of a womanizer and that he's it. And I just like, and then Mary is upset by that, but then they somehow have a bit of banter and then they kind of carry on as normal. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> what? Just, no, it's just, it frustrates me so much. Like, no, just just no, and also there's something that annoys me. There's a bit in here basically where, in this last chapter that I've just read, and it's where they go horse riding, and clearly this person doesn't know how to write about horse riding, or like how you actually ride a horse, um, because apparently you, you know, smack your reins against a horse's neck. If you guys don't know, I have a horse, I've been riding for the majority of my life, so, you don't do that, that's not how you make a horse go, unless if it is in a carriage and it's, you obviously, you know, you are controlling the horse only by reins but yeah, just, no that's just a little thing that kind of annoyed me, I know it won't matter to everybody, it's just a tiny thing but if somebody's going to talk about horse riding, please talk about it correctly um, so yeah, I don't hate this book, but even though it sounds like it does, I'm just really frustrated with it, I'm frustrated with the characters at the moment and something really heartbreaking has just happened not to mary but something ha heartbreaking has just happened to lizzie um and yeah i'm just like i want to finish this book more because i'm just frustrated and i feel like i just need to sit and get my frustration out and finish it so like i said i've got like less just over 100 pages left so I will maybe update you guys when I finish this book or maybe if I've got something else to talk to you guys about but yeah it's just it's been a ride um, and I just find Mary quite an A character and also there was a very quick glimpse of Georgiane in this book like literally like a small interaction that she and Mary had and it just made Georgiana sound like a bitch and she's not she's just shy and she's a very nice person not that I've ever met her because obviously she's fictional but yeah there's just that moment where it's just that like, I wouldn't imagine Georgiana being horrid um or rude that's not or cold I don't imagine her like that but that's literally like one paragraph that's the only thing that she was in um but yeah so those are my thoughts at the moment Honestly, I, I honestly prefer the other book so much more at the moment. I don't, like I said, I don't hate it. I'm just more frustrated with certain aspects of it and the characters. And I just don't have that same warmth towards Mary that I did in the other book. Like, I feel like she's a character that I want to, like, you know, support. I want to root for her. And I don't feel that in this book. I don't feel a connection with her. Um... And I do like that she has a little bit more bite, that she has a little bit more humour, um, but it's just not the same. Um, it's not what, what I want from a Mary Bennett retelling or, you know, just yeah. There we go. I'm going to stop rambling on now because I've been talking for about 10 minutes. But those are my thoughts. So I will update you guys when I have done some more reading. Um, maybe I will update you, like I said, when I finished it, or if I have anything else to talk about. But that's where we're up to at the moment. So I'm going to go about my day now, um, hopefully get rid of all this frustration of these characters and this naive, um, mo stupid moment that they've had together. And hopefully it will get a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you.
So I finished the book and I have thoughts. Many, many thoughts. So I finished Mary B last night and it's not gonna lie, this is probably my least favourite Pride and Prejudice retelling that I have read so far, which is honestly such a shame because I did like kind of pretty well on the streak of like reading Pride and Prejudice retellings and actually enjoying them. But like I said, definitely my least favourite. So I was about halfway through the book, I think, or maybe just over halfway through when I last updated you guys, and I can't really talk about too much without spoiling it. Um, so I can't really, I shouldn't rant about it really, but you know what I mean, I can't really talk about it too much. But I think the thing that annoyed me with this book so much is that there's characters and the things that they did and the way that they were portrayed was so unbelievable like compared to the original story obviously the author is allowed to interpret this story however they want um like i didn't mind the bit like during prime and prejudice that bit was all right it's more the bit after like that takes place after the original story that annoyed me the most because the characters were just so far off from what they were in the original story, like Kitty is really horrible and then by the end of it she's really nice. Um, I don't know whether that's just because of maturity or whatever. Um, and then the character that I mentioned before, who I'm gonna just say is the Colonel, if you know who he is, he is just so unbelievably far off. Uh, he's nothing like the original character, which I just don't understand. He's meant portrayed as like an, a player and a womanizer and a dick quite frankly. Um, so he was the one that I least liked and like Lizzie wasn't portrayed very nicely. Darcy was alright, I didn't mind Darcy too much but there was something to do with him in this novel uh, that was just, that, that was like one of those unbelievable moments where you just, that wouldn't happen, you know? Um, and there's like stuff between Lizzie and Darcy that just you wouldn't believe would happen either or I hope I, I personally wouldn't believe would happen. And over, I don't really know whether I like Mary as a character or not in this because even though I like that she has a bit more grit and a bit more like oomph to her I guess, a bit more spirit to her um, than what you get in the original story, she's very naive um, for a lot of the book. I don't know how much she grows from that um, but I just I'm kind of in a mixed bag of whether like I like her or not. And also in this book, there were so many deaths. There were five deaths in this book. Five deaths in a Prime and Prejudice retelling. And there's nothing wrong with that. And technically now that I kind of think about it, most of the deaths weren't unjust. Like they could have abs absolutely happened in that time um, and to the fam and to, you know, the characters and stuff. But did they have to happen all in the same book? Um, and one of them was an animal death and it was to do with a horse and the way it was quite graphic, the way that it died, which made me very uncomfortable. Like, there's nothing wrong with kind of including animal deaths in books, but being a horse owner um, and a general animal lover, it made me very uncomfortable. So I didn't really read that bit. So just if you want to read this book, just be careful um, of that bit. It's kind of in the second half of the book. so. If you, in, just in case you kind of feel uncomfortable um, reading about that. Like I said, there's so much more I could talk about this book, but I would be spoiling it if I did that and I don't want to spoil you guys, just in case you do want to pick this book up. Um, yeah, so overall, was my least favourite Prime Prejudice retelling. Out of the two Mary Bennett retellings, I definitely prefer this. I feel like my opinion on this might have been slightly different if I hadn't read this first. Um, but overall, just, it wasn't a vibe, like, the writing was very good in this and kind of the flow of the story and even though this is a lot shorter than this book like it does cover a lot in the story um and all that sort of thing but yeah like i said the thing about i didn't like the characters in this book i didn't get that same warmth from like the characters like i wanted to root for mary and i didn't really root for her in this book and in the ending the way it ended i wasn't like i wasn't mad about it but I just feel like how it ended, it just didn't quite sit with me right. Mary doesn't end up in kind of the typical like ending that women of this period kind of do. Um, 
which I quite like. I like that she's kind of more independent in this novel. However, kind of the way it goes about and how it, like, the person who helps her actually, like, gets that point at the end. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I don't know if I like that, personally. Um, but I do see a lot of similarities between these two books in certain, like, topics um, and kind of the themes and kind of the way it's gone about. But yeah, like I said, this is definitely my favourite um, for my personal taste because there is a interview in the back of here with the author and she does say how she kind of takes a different approach, kind of showing a slightly more darker side of the characters in this book. Again, nothing wrong with that, but I just feel like they t took it a bit too far to the point where it was just totally unbelievable. Like there's so many things that uh, Mary wouldn't do that Lizzie wouldn't do, that Darcy wouldn't do. There's so much things that the characters wouldn't do that are in this novel, um, which just kind of tips it over the edge. And there were so many moments where I was just like, I had my head, hand, head in my hands, just like, oh my God. This is like maybe 2.5 stars, uh, not my favorite, unfortunately. And which is really sad because I was hoping I would like it because it would be so interesting to see the difference between these. But obviously this is my own personal opinion. I, th I did look on Goodreads, the, ratings weren't great and neither were the reviews on this but obviously there are some people who really enjoy it so that is my conclusion my personal opinion is that I personally prefer the other Bennet sister a lot more than Mary B but if you are watching this video and you've read both books you might think differently which is absolutely fine that's the whole point of books everybody thinks very differently but I just thought it'd be a really fun video to kind of read to uh, Mary Bennett retellings, I kind of see which one I prefer, kind of like a little battle sort of thing. But that is the end of this video. So if you have read either of these books or both of them, let me know your opinions on them down below. I would be really curious to find out. Unfortunately, this book will probably not be in my Pride and Prejudice retelling video, which I will hopefully be filming at some point this year. I've had it on my cards to film it for years. I just keep discovering more and more books that I need to read for that video, but hopefully it will be up at some point this year. So obviously make sure you are subscribed if you want to watch that video coming up. Um, but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it, so I probably wouldn't put it in that video, but I may put it as like a little alternative at the end in case people are interested. But like I said before, let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you have read both of them, which one do you prefer, or just your thoughts on these books in general as I'd love to know, and also let me know if you have any Prime Prejudice retellings that you would love to get to or want to share with everybody else, because like I said, my list is ever-growing. I definitely have three more books that I need to read before I do my Prime Prejudice retelling video, which I'm so excited to finally get around to filming. Like I said, hopefully it'll be this year, which will be amazing. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more bookish videos from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you will be noted every time I post a new video. As always, I will leave the links on my social media along with the links to my Goodreads in the description down below for you guys. If you would like to see more bookish content that you will not find on this channel. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you so, so much. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.